Hello, everybody. This is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm very excited to have a very special guest. His name is Chris Donaldson, and he is here to, to talk about no matter what age you are, you can do whatever you put your mind to. And he's here today to talk about his ideas and his tools and strategies to enjoy in life, no matter what age you are. And he's going to discuss his book that had a tremendous success. So, Chris, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hey, Stacey. Great to be here. Um, basically, I'm a 65-year-old retiree, practically, uh, living in Belfast, Northern Ireland. But the story we're talking about started, I suppose, in the 70s when I was at school in Belfast. Belfast wasn't one of the nicest places in the world to be growing up, with bombs going off and people getting shot. Not that it bothered us too much at the time, because when you live somewhere, you get used to it, and your kids, right? what's going on is, at the minute is normal anyway, but... I guess we could in my twenties realize there's nice places to be, so I decided I wanted to go to Australia, and for some reason I decided to go on a motorbike, mm -hmm. see a bit of the world. So I left in uh, October '79, and I got as far as London, and then the um, the Ayatollah Khomeini decided to take over the American embassy in Tehran. Oh wow! Which kind of closed my scuppered my plans for going to Australia. So yeah. I left home, told them my friends would be back in two years. I couldn't really come back in 10 days and say I'm back. So I decided I had to go somewhere else. So I decided to go to South Africa. Uh, drove down through Europe, through the Middle East, a few adventures around Israel and Syria and Jordan. Wow. Um, and then across the, across the desert, which is tricky on a, on a road bike, not made for that sort of terrain. But I ended up in Cape Town in the middle of apartheid. So it's quite an exciting trip. Um, big thing in those days, I suppose it's hard to imagine nowadays, but when we want to find out anything at all about somewhere we're going, we just Google it and just all the information is at your fingertips. But in those days, you had guidebooks, which I didn't have because my guidebooks were all for going to India. Yeah. Uh, so I was really driving blind. I didn't know where I was going, what was happening next. And they're not really with the destination even in mind. And it's only afterwards I realized that that was part of the beauty of the trip because 99% of the time you're going on a journey, you've got a destination you're going to. That's the point of it. Yeah. And I was just traveling for the sake of traveling. I love so it. Living, living by the days, for the days, you know? Yeah. Um, so I managed to, to hit your lift on a sailing yacht race on the way back to Europe. And the sponsors of the yacht race shipped a bike to the States. So I rode around the States and worked there for a while and then Long story short, I ended up in Argentina. Wow. A year and a half later. So um that's the title of the book going the wrong way. You can't get much further adrift in Australia and Argentina. Um I started writing a book 40 years ago, but I sort of gave up. I didn't have the confidence probably. And mm -hmm. I finished it for uh just after COVID. Mm -hmm. It's now a bestseller in on Amazon. Excellent. But it was, it, it's kind of a unique experience going through my manuscripts that I've written when I was 22, 21, 22, 40 years later, reading about the, the young guy I was then and um, what I was thinking, what I was doing from a perspective of, an old, of myself as being older, as an older right. person. So it's quite unique. So um, long story, after we read, we got some great reviews and so on on Amazon. One of my mates said to me, well, you never got to Australia, why not have an go? So it was a bit of a challenge. So I thought yeah. we'll have to make it harder. I still have the same motorbike. I'm 45 years old, so I thought the two of us will head off. Um, so it's just after COVID, we headed off to Australia. And legs, I kind of couldn't afford to disappear for three months at a time anymore. Right. So um, I drive for two weeks, park our bikes up, and then come fly home and go back to work, see the families, and then two months later, go back out again do another leg so after 43 years leaving 43 years after I left Belfast in 79 I finally got to Australia last year on the same bike wow you've been on some adventure <laughs> yeah there's been a few in between as well <laughs> but uh no it's interesting the first journey was very much a coming of age trip mm -hmm. I suppose it was 21 even my teenage years becoming an adult going into work and families, bringing up a family and so on. Uh, that's sort of 40 years span that we have to do that. 
Yeah. Um, and by luck and coincidence, this trip has been the other end of that sort of that, that, that time is coming into retirement and um, dealing with the problems that associated with that, especially for men. I think it's a difficult time because uh, men identify themselves with work very much. Mm -hmm. And if they're entrepreneurs, the businessmen, they've been putting 100% of their effort into their, well, their families and their work and they yeah. have very little time for themselves. All of a sudden they retire and there's just nothing there. There's no hobbies of by the take a mow the lawn and play golf a couple of times a week. It's not really what you work for forty years for, sort of thing. So yeah, one of the show people you do you can still do what you did when you were twenty one if you have the confidence to get out and do it. I think oh. we tend to talk ourselves out of things rather than talk ourselves into things mm -hmm. as we get older. Oh, for sure. Definitely. I think a lot of times when you get older, you, you start to develop in self-doubt you, you, and you let your age and the number, you know, get in the way of, of you know, yeah. of what you want to do in life. There's so much you could do, so much you can accomplish. And age is just a number, you know, it's it's how you feel. And, and your mind really plays a big toll on that is, you know, if you have a good mindset and you really want to get out there and you want to explore life like you've been doing and you want to venture out, there's nothing stopping you, I don't think. And it sounds like nothing stopped you. No, yeah, well, as I say, I think a lot of people like reasons not to do something rather than the reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. As well as that, uh, like these days, culture's all got a bit heavy in the health and safety. Everybody's risking risk assessments to whatever you're doing. You have to look at all possibilities and probably things yeah. that happen. Whereas, in fact, that's the challenge is to get through these possibilities, these problems as they arise and get over them, you know, rather than right. using them as an excuse not to do it. Oh, definitely. I, and I think a lot of people make excuses for themselves and maybe they let their fear factor get in the way, you know, um, just you know, worrying about what if, what if, what if, you know, and, you know, instead of thinking too much, they should just, you know, follow their heart and just do what their heart says. Do you feel like that's how you kind of got through it? Like, cause you didn't seem like you ever self-doubted yourself. You had, you know, you had these ideas that you wanted to, you know, adventure out, you wanted to explore the world and, you know, you just did it, you you know, what gave you the courage and, and you know, the ambition to want to just go out and do it? Well, the first time it was probably just uh, stupidity to be honest, because yeah. <laughs> ignorance is a great thing sometimes. But if I'd known what I was going to do, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. If, it, if I had it, if Google had been there in '79, I could check what the state of Africa was like, what South America was like, what was happening in Colombia. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone. You know, you just right. Yeah, yeah. Smart, smart guy wouldn't have gone. So, <laughs> as I say, not knowing what was what was happening. Uh, was 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 a benefit. One I mean, one stage in Sudan, I actually drove off the edge of my map. Wow! And what the next country was, I had to wait for somebody coming, met somebody the other way, and we exchanged maps. So it was a very different place to be in those days. But uh, yeah, I mean, the first trip, lots of things went wrong because um, of the chaos was caused by me going to a place that I didn't know rather than plan to, to go on the Eastern journey. Yeah. But that's what made the trip because, I mean, a, a good story is when everything when things go wrong and you can put them right. Yeah. No, sure. Nobody had been Romeo and Juliet wouldn't have gone too far if they got married and had kids, would they? Yeah. And it's only when, the, only when things go wrong that the story gets interesting. Oh, for sure. Definitely. I think, you know, I think that's what makes an adventure so fun, you know, is a challenge, you know, you know, at first you might probably be scared, you know, and unsure of what to do. But, you know, once you figure it out and the pieces start coming together and you look back at it later on in life, you know, it, it kind of it is uh, exciting in the sense, you know, you know, I, yeah. I would feel that, you know, how, how did it make you feel to travel to all these different places and do all these things? Well, it's obviously, it was something I very enjoy a lot. Um, I was twenty one. You think you're invincible. You know, you think you're going to live forever. Yeah. Um, you take risks. You do stupid things. <laughs> sixty five, sixty four, sixty five. You're a bit more aware of things can go wrong, so you don't go around the corners quite so fast anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I finally got to Iran. Finally got the American embassy. It's still there. Still all locked up. It's, it's a museum for the. I think wow. that's science says the USA den of espionage, they call it. Mm -hmm. It's still mm -hmm. there. 
Wow. Ironically, they haven't knocked it down or taken it away or built something else there. I think there's maybe some hope sometime it'll be an American embassy again, I always sort of think, but it's still there. So funny. That was a bugbear that stopped me the first time. So it was great to get there the second time. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Did you, you know, at this stage of the game, you know, you were telling me earlier that you feel like no matter what age you are, you can accomplish anything you put your mind to, you know, and, and how, you know, how do you feel about like, you know, what do you want to tell the listeners, you know, that are, you know, getting into their middle age and, you know, they're starting to get older and some of them are like, well, you know, I'm ex I'm, you know, this age old and I don't know if it's for me anymore or, you know, maybe if I was younger, you know, and they just let it go, even though it might be something that they really want to do and it might bring, you know, a lot of joy to them. They, they kind of, they're hesitant because of their age. Yeah, I think the trouble with age is you stop losing interest in, or you start losing interest in learning about things. I think when you're young, everything is new and fresh, and you want yeah. to take it all in and learn about it. Yeah. Learn about different cultures and so on. Right. As you get older, you sort of think, I oh, couldn't be bothered with that, you know. So <laughs> watch Netflix rather than going out and doing something else. So we sort of, I think that's just part of the human body's met metabolism. Yeah. That way. Uh, when I was in India, I took my helmet off in a garage, and the guys were shocked when he saw my grey hair and my wrinkles. <laughs> he started laughing. You know, I said, "Well, what are you laughing at?" He says, "What age are you?" And I said, "I'm 64." And he started laughing again. He says, "My grandfather's 64, and we don't let him out of the house." <laughs> <laughs> so it's and he's fit enough. There's nothing wrong with him. It just people have it's it's, it's 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 all in your mindset. It is all in your mindset. You know, I think that your your mind is a powerful tool. I don't think people realize how powerful the mind really is. And if you really put something in your head, you know, you will do it, you know. And mm -hmm. it, you know, I, people have to really realize how powerful their mind is and not let their fears, you know, or their self-doubt overcome them, you know. And, and nowadays, like, what are you doing now? Are you still adventuring on or... You know, have you uh, slowed down a little bit? Well, my bike is uh, it's in Sydney, Australia at the minute, so it's it's got I've got to do something with it. So I'm hopefully taking it over to the states and drive across America on it. Wow! So, plan, plan. so I'm actually taking it around the world. There's obviously far too much water in the world to drive around it, really. But <laughs> I go from island hop to island hop. So that's the next plan is to do the states. That's amazing. You know, you, you, how many places have you been to? Do you even know? Countries of probably 55 or something like that, 50, as well in the top 50s. Wow. Um, I should count them up sometime, I suppose. It's not so much the number of the different diversity of what's exciting is the different diversity of people around the place. Oh, for sure. And yeah. oh, how much, um, how happy people are to help you along your way as well if you're traveling on your own, even places like Iran. Yeah. It's one of the friendliest countries I've been to, whereas from the media and from our governments, they're the guys that are out to get us, you know, whereas actually when you go there and make the people they're as nice as anybody. Right. You know, it's it's amazing at um, you know, how many places you've traveled to and and you know, and you 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 still have an agenda on your on your list to, to go to. And, you know, how has that changed you as a person, you know, going, you know, going to all these different places, you know, has it, you know, has it given you some, some characteristics or qualities or made you look at life differently? Um, sorry for that. Yes. Yeah, so that, well, I think probably since the first trip I went away, I've always found a problem with something to be solved rather than something to get in the way with, with it. Um, right. So um okay yeah what, what i learned probably in the first trip as i say is to get problem problem is something to get around rather than to stop you there's mm -hmm. always a way through and but if you're on your own as i was you've got yourself into that situation so you only yourself there to get yourself out of it again right so it was a good uh, start to my life to start to realize that and through my business life i've had three or four different careers along the way and I've always been interested in learning things and learning new businesses, new new technologies and, and working with them. I think once you stop wanting to learn, you really just, you may as well just sit there, watch TV. 
Right, exactly. And how do you make the time for all this? Because, you know, as you said, you have businesses that you do and you, know, you also travel and you explore the world and you're enjoying your life, but yet you have a business that you can bring an in income so you can enjoy your life. You know, how do you balance the two? Well, that's a good question. You need to ask my wife that. <laughs> give you a different answer. Uh, well, yeah. Technology is a great thing. And you, well, the first time I went away, you, was away from home for sorry for this. Um, first time I went away was uh, I think it took me a day to phone home one day, time. I had to book into the post office to book a phone. Whereas now you can phone home with your mobile anywhere in the world for free, you know. So yeah, and you also you got your laptop. So as you said, um. Talking earlier, yeah, you can be. I can be answering emails anywhere in the world. I was in Kathmandu talking to my solicitor about a property. Right. So it's it's a bit difficult to get your own head around that sometimes. So, uh, but it's it's amazing what's 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 available to be able to be done now. Yeah, it, that's amazing. And so, are you are you gone for most part of the year? Like you know, because you're traveling back and forth and you're going to all these different places and planning it out. Well, I'm not. I came back from Australia last year. I have to ship the bike to Los Angeles and fly over there to pick it up there. But no, I've been. It was probably the three years we were traveling. I was probably away for about three months. Okay. Because I was flying, going off for two weeks, coming, leaving, parking the bike up, and coming back for two months, and then going for another two weeks, and then back for the two months. So, um, again, it was the problem was when you're 21, you can disappear for as long as you like. Yeah. But family and commitments you have to be about exactly but, uh, say there's a way to do it exactly to it. i think that's a great point there's a way to do it you know some people are like oh i can't do it you know i don't have the time blah 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 but you know if you really want to do something and you really have you know um something that you've always you know really um wanted to do you can you could always find a way i think what do yeah. you think? I think people people overthink these things as well. They tend to look at the problems, trying to find the problems before they occur. Yeah, problems will happen along the way, but you just you know, resolve them. You can do a certain amount of planning, obviously. Yeah. But um, sometimes I think you can plan too much, mm -hmm. and then you. It's, it's the way we're we're educated now. Is everybody's you go out for a meal? You got to check out the reviews. Yeah. Every everything you do, you check it out before you can go. It's all available. information's all available. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. You know, um, it's rare you would actually just go into town and go find a restaurant, walk in without having it all checked out first. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have a a book that you've written. Tell me a little about the book that you've written. Well, it's going the wrong way. As I say, I was I started writing it when I was twenty two, because nobody else had done a journey like that and then there somebody yeah. an older guy wrote another book who had been to much the same places and got his book out before me yeah so I my my innocence thought well nobody's going to buy one of my two books about riding around the world yeah but what I didn't think about was he was 45 as a journalist I was a 21 year old student practically so our two journeys we were in the same places but with completely different times different yeah experiences um so yeah it's it's Going really well. It's self self published and it's um it's like got some great reviews, over thirteen hundred five star reviews. Wow. Pretty high on the level of, of Amazon. Um which is a company we all love to hate, but we all think we're taking over the world, but we can't do without them. <laughs> and they are amazing that you can you know you can publish a book and have it delivered anywhere in the world in a couple of days. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And, and so you started the book in your 20s. And then what made you want to finish it? You know, because you you held off for a while. And what made you what gave you the mo motivation to want to just finish it and get it out there to the world? A couple of things, I suppose. One of the uh, I've had a good experience, business experience with banks taking over properties and going to court and various uh, criminal activities banks get up to in mm -hmm. states and the UK. So I was going to write a book about that, and then I realized, well, nobody really gives a damn about that. You know, they're sort of interested in their own bank mortgage and your own position. Yeah. They're not really interested in 
Ruby developer or somebody doing something like that. It's not right. very exciting. Yeah. So I realized, well, actually, I have an exciting story here. It's half written. I just mm -hmm. need to finish it off and then maybe do the maybe do the property story at some stage. So yeah. um, that was enough to get me going. And it was amazing that uh, even though the journey was 40 years ago, reading mm -hmm. through my diary notes and my journals and looking at the photographs and starting to write, the memory is still kind of there. You're know, still covered with fog of 40 years working and drinking too much, things like that. <laughs> But uh, it's amazing how you can scrape away the layers and still get back to you know, the memories of things that happened to you 40 years ago are still there. You right. don't remember other things people said or whatever, but you remember how you felt and what things looked like and what you were, what you were feeling, as I say. Yeah. So what is the book called, so everybody knows? It's called Going the Wrong Way by Chris Donaldson. It's on Amazon. It's on paperback, hardback, audiobook, which is going very well, and ebook. And do you write a, did you write a, like a, a journal and kept track of everything or basically it's all from memory, just, just thinking back and just reflecting and then just putting it down on paper and telling the stories? No, I wrote a journal and uh, as I say, when I got home, I started writing the book, I got it in a manuscript format, so I had quite a lot of work done. So the information was always there, you know? Yeah. I uh, just needed to jog my memory and I'm looking at the photographs and getting out the albums and stuff. So it's, it's it was quite uh, quite emotional at times. Yeah. And why was it emotional at times? Well, because it would, I could look back and see how I was feeling at the time, stuck in some dive in Africa, wondering how I was going to get out. I was, yeah. I was feeling, why am I doing this? Right, and right. That sort of thing. And then realizing, well, this is how I got out of it. And then wow. the fact that I got myself into those same situations again, 40 years later again. Yeah, yeah. Realize how little I learned. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's all part of the challenge when you stop challenging yourself you really say you, you need to keep keep yourself keep an interest keep yourself motivated yeah I agree with you it's kind of, you know when you stop challenging yourself you know that's when you become un unmotivated like you said yeah. earlier that's when you just want to sit on the couch and you know life just you just then you just drag along and life yeah. has no no purpose and no meaning because you're not you know, challenging yourself and, and doing the things that you, you love to do, you know, mm -hmm. and is there a specific message that you were trying to get across? Are you trying to entertain people or you just wanted to motivate people to follow their dreams? I suppose motivate people to follow your dreams instead of watching TV, go out and do it. Yeah. Uh, so sort of get off your ass and do it sort of thing. Like it's, it's, too, it's just so much, uh, no, what's the word? I can't, can't think of the word. People have to talk procrastination. Yes, 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 yeah. Doing things. I think COVID was a, a terrible thing in a way, but obviously it was a disease, but it put people off going out and doing things. People just want to sit in front of their computer all day and yeah. watch it rather than do it. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, if you had to take everything that we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on a couple of specific pointers that would be important for the listeners what are some things you'd like to tell the listeners um well much the same as I was saying nothing nothing is impossible like I have I'm 65 I've got sort of mild Parkinson's um I, I can't you know I'm not particularly fit physically fitter than anybody else but I can still ride a motorbike around the world yeah so if I can do that anybody can do anything put, put your just decide what you want to do and go and do it right and that's amazing. You know, you didn't mention earlier, but you have Parkinson and you didn't let your condition get you down. You know, you didn't, you know, you, you know, you got pushed an obstacle in front of you and you just, you know, you worked your way through it. You didn't let it get you down. Just like, you know, when you were riding and things happened and you weren't sure, you know, where the next, next right turn was, or, you know, how to get out of a certain situation, you figured it out. And you just kept pursuing, you know, and, and it seems like you did that too with, with your condition. Cause a lot of people, when they have conditions, they just give up, you yeah. know, and that, that doesn't, it doesn't seem like that, that was you. It seems like you were persistent to survive and enjoy life and thrive. Well, I'm a stubborn bugger sort of thing. So every problem in front of you is something to be, to be <laughs> resolved rather than something to stop you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, in your on your website, can you tell everybody your website first of all? It's chrisdonaldson.world. 
Um, and you can order the book through that as well. I'll send you a signed copy. Um, trouble is, it so uh, costs as much for the book as it costs as much as the postage to send it to the states. <laughs> but uh, the Chris Donaldson world, I'm on Facebook as well and Instagram and all those things. And um, on your website, do you have like uh, like um, some stories or you know what type of things do you have that you offer on your website? Yeah, there's a few stories there, uh, lots of photographs as well, and links for where to get the book. Um, there's a, on YouTube as well, you'll see the, some of the audiobook uh, uh, sections are on YouTube as well, so you can get that too. Um, but yeah, Crystal Donaldson, and you'll see most of the stuff there. That's awesome. This has been amazing. I am truly amazed with, you know, what you've accomplished from your 20s to now and you're still going and nothing is stopping you. You're like a locomotive and, you know, you're just you just keep chugging along and and nothing is going to break down that engine. You're just going and going and going and going. And I think it's wonderful because I find I find traveling myself very exciting. I love learning about new cultures. I love seeing different parts of the world, you know, and then so many of the other countries, you know, they preserve their history so you could look mm -hmm. back and you could really learn a lot you know and uh it's yeah. amazing to be able to travel like that and yeah. you're doing it on your bike and no less and that's amazing yeah i mean life is a journey itself it's um you gotta enjoy it as you go along hundred because we're all going to the same destination yep that's very uh, true so you may as well enjoy it when you when you're, when you're moving a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think that's something that all the listeners should remember. We're all on the same journey. And while we're here, we should make the best of it and make the most that we possibly can. And I think the memories that you're you're making are amazing. I think your your persistence to 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 do the things you love to do and not let anything get in your way is amazing. Stub stubbornness, apparently. Yeah, well, it's it's stuff, but it's a good stubbornness though. It's you know, it's uh you know, you're, you're doing what you want to do. You're having yeah. fun. You're enjoying yourself. You're making memories. You're sharing yeah. those memories with the world and you're giving people around you motivation, which is amazing because sometimes people like yourself, when they hear your story and they see, well, if he could do it, then I could do it. You know, exactly. that's what we want really to get across today is that, you know, if somebody, you know, that is older is still living the dream and still journeying and still making, you know, miracles happen, then obviously if you could do it, anybody could do it. They just have to put their mind to it and they just have to be, have a, a have a, just a good mindset and have that determination. And maybe a little of that stubbornness doesn't hurt if it's, if it's a, it's go, it's for a good purpose. But yeah, I think you're doing great. And I congratulate you on your book. And is Amazon the only place they can find your book? I, Amazon, your website, any place else? Amazon, no website, the only places, yeah. All right, excellent. So that's great. So if people want to get your book, it's, it's what's your book title again? Going the Wrong Way? Going the Wrong Way, yeah. Yeah. And they can find it on Amazon or your website. This has been amazing. And I loved having you on the show, Chris. Thank you Thanks so much. much for your time. This has been wonderful. And pleasure. I commend you. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.